we're going to press record and get this effort underway and um, get ready to kick off OER20 online. So welcome everyone to OER20 online. It's the pandemic edition of this conference, hopefully the first and only. My name is Maren Deepwell. I'm ALT's CEO and I have the privilege of welcoming you all and be the first to say hello and then introduce our wonderful co-chair team for this year. Two weeks ago, we decided this is gonna all go online. So as this is an online conference, here is the technical bit. And together with my colleague, Martin Hoxie, who is the and has all the spreadsheets to keep us running, hopefully we'll talk you through what to do. Martin, you wanna wave hello? I'll, I'll do a verbal wave. Hello, everyone. Welcome to OER20. So Martin and I will just walk you through the platform before we hand over to our co-chairs for the conference welcome. First thing you need to do um, when you log in to Blackboard Collaborate is find the access panel that's in the bottom right-hand corner. And there you should hopefully find everything you need to take part in the conference and all the live webinar sessions. At the bottom of your screen, you should find a place where you can set a status and raise your hand to ask a question. And this is where we're going to start with some audience participation straight away and hopefully get you all giving us some reactions. So if you go to the bottom of your screen where it says my status and settings, you can select to give us some feedback, happy, surprised, sad, confused, agree, disagree. So if you can all try and find that now and just try and press one of these buttons to give us some feedback, that would be great. Awesome, I can see you all finding that. Please play along. And you'll also be able to set a photo by clicking on your self and your own settings and give your icon at the conference a bit of personal presence. Martin, do you want to cover the chat? Yeah, so uh, in the uh, right hand side, we have the chat box. So uh, this is going to be enabled for all our sessions. So uh, I can see a lot of you have already found that. And also you found the uh, um, uh, emoji icons as well. So you can see lots of lovely penguins and unicorns. Um, so uh, throughout the conference, we'll have facilitators mo monitoring the chat. Um, so if you have any questions, during sessions, um, you can post them there and we'll do our best to pick them up. Thanks, Martin. Um, I'm just gonna ask you all now to go to the chat menu if you can and find the clap emoji, because in a moment we're gonna introduce three code chairs who've been working towards this very moment for a whole year. And I'm gonna ask you all to put your hands together in a minute as we introduce them, because we're gonna try and give them the loudest and warmest OER welcome that we can, be it a virtual one. Before we do that, um, I know some of you are having problems with um, hearing notifications. So um, uh, because we are having quite busy sessions, our recommendation is to turn off audio notifications. So in the um, settings, you'll find uh, adjust notification settings. So if you expand that, you can turn off audio and pop up notifications. So hopefully that will make it a bit easier to um, follow along. Thanks, Martin. And help is at hand, not just here in the webinar sessions, but on the conference platform. There's a dedicated help menu. I know many of you will have found that already but it includes tips for participants. And for those of you, and there's over a hundred of you who are presenting at some way at OER 20. So you will be able to find guidance for presenters. We will do our best to help you upload your slides and get the very best sessions happening live, but also by recorded content and a lot of other different formats. There are even how-to video guides on how to create your personal session schedule. Martin, I know help is at hand um, via email as well to helpdesk at alt.ac.uk and you should find that email address everywhere. Is there any other um, technical tips that we need to share just now? 
Um, just to say, we are quite a small team, so please be patient. We have um, quite a few of you attending the conference this year, so uh, we'll do our best to get to your uh, inquiries as quickly as possible. That's right, we're here to help, and I want to give a special wave to all the members of our seven strong staff team who are here today, Jane, Jane, Emma, Jane, we've got all the Janes covered, also Debbie, Fiona, um, Martin, and myself. We're here to help you and the best out of OER 20. We've never welcomed over 900 people to OER. It's our largest ever event. And a few weeks ago, our board of trustees, many of whom are in the room today, took the brave decision for us to try and deliver a canceled event all online. I can only emphasize that this isn't business as usual for anyone here in the room, um, neither for the co-chairs, nor the presenters, nor our staff, nor for you as participants. So what we do, all we can to make it possible for you to have the best experience, trying to stick to our values and trying to put our open approach that runs through everything we do into practice. So we're really looking forward to spending next two time with you, two days with you rather, and hopefully give you some hope and joy in open education. But now it's my privilege to introduce to you the people who are going to be leading us through the next three days. So please put your hands together and give the loudest, warmest and most caring welcome at OER20 to our co-chairs, Daniel, Jonathan and Mia. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm imagining the sound. <laughs> I, th I, th I think it's a it's a rather nervous and anxious uh, welcome to everybody from from the from the three of us. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you. And good morning. So, Mia, Shall do you want to say? maybe kick off and just say um, say a few things about yourself? Sure thing. Um, my name is Mia Zamora. I'm an assist associate professor of English at Kane University, which is in New Jersey, which is why when I turn on my camera, it's quite dark where I am. Um, so I've been an open practitioner for some time. I love to collaborate. Um, and we'll tell you a little bit more about how the three of us came to become uh, co-chairs in a minute, um, but uh, just, sharing a little bit of my research. I, I do scholarship in electronic literature, which is literature that's born in, an, um, in a computational environment. And um, a lot of my scholarship is born of my pedagogy um, and hence the um, inclination to teach in the open. Um, so I'll pass the mic on to Daniel who can introduce himself. Thank you, Mia. Uh, well, as you know, I'm Daniel, that's my name, uh, B. Aaron Rubia. I understand that I don't have the easiest uh, surname to pronounce, uh, but that's the Spanish pronunciation. Um, I work at Coventry University at the Disruptive Media Learning Lab, um, especially focusing on a portfolio of uh, initiatives and projects around uh, open knowledge and digital fluency and network uh, learning. So. It has been great to work with me and Jonathan over the last few uh, months, and of course with the ALT team as well. Um, and we will say a little bit more about how we came together uh, uh, to, to be the uh, co-chairs for this edition of the conference. But now, Jonathan, you might want to say also uh, something more about the, the lab as a space that we share in common. So, so no pressure there then, Daniel. Uh, yeah, I, I think, first of all, I think I'm um, uh, so impressed at uh, Mia's dedication for getting up at a crazy hour this morning. Um, yeah, so I'm Jonathan Shaw. Um, I'm a professor of photography and media and also director of the Disruptive Media Learning Lab at Coventry University. Um, I've been involved, I, I guess, over quite a long period of time, since I, I think about 2008, with various things to do with open education, um, with the work that we did uh, in the early days, exploring what that might mean for photography, media, how we explored different forms of publishing, uh, engaging in sort of podcasts to really build that, that sense of a network community. So um, 
truly delighted and it feels like I'm coming for a full circle back to um, OER and, and being able to kind of uh, work with Daniel and Mia um, who have been fabulous to sort of um, yeah try and put this this all together. The lab um, to Daniel's point is, is very much focused on I guess that idea of, of practice and how we turn I, I suppose sometimes crazy ideas into reality and work across the the 40,000 sort of strong uh, student community that we have at Coventry University which sits both in Coventry itself up in Scarborough down in London uh, and as of September uh, we're due to be opening up in Poland so yeah uh, a very big welcome and uh, yeah thank you everybody for having us. Can we move to the next slide, Martin? So Mia, is this, is this, as this is your photograph, <laughs> do you want to maybe that is, kick us off here? That is a recent picture that I took um, just a day or two ago on the home stretch, so to speak, um, when the three of us um, got together in one of our many hangouts in preparation for today. Um, but our story is, um, how, how, how did the three of us end up working on this conference together? Um, it starts with an event that happened at the um, D Disruptive Media Learning Lab. Um, what was it? About a year and a half ago or so. It was October and, 2018. Yes. And um, I was in the UK uh, to attend the Mozilla uh, Festival and present there. Um, and, and I was there with Mahabali and Catherine Cronin um, to present at Mozilla. And the lab um, graciously invited me to give a talk at a very special event that, like a satellite event that they were having at Coventry. Um, do you want to speak a little bit about that, Daniel? Yes, and I can move to the next slide. So, as I said, we have a line of work around the uh, kind of open web and open knowledge and digital fluency. And uh, we also run and host some events from time to time in the lab. So this was one of our events looking specifically at, about the potential and the value of the open web as a space for teaching and learning. And as, um, as Mia said, it was a satellite or fringe event of the MOSFEST. Um, if you have there a link uh, which will take you to our website will we um, kind of uh, shared uh, different uh, outputs from the day so you will be able to watch uh, Mia's presentation along with other presentations uh, that we had on that day uh, but basically it was a celebration of uh, the open web um, uh, for teaching and learning uh, we had colleagues uh, from Wikimedia as well, which is another uh, partner that we are uh, working with. Um, it was uh, the result of our participation in the Mozilla Open Leaders Program. So over a year, we developed this idea of uh, AUTI, which is uh, the Open Web uh, um, for Learning and Teaching Expertise Hub. Um, and yes, that, that's the kind of context and um, how we I think it was the first time we met uh, face to face. Is that right, Mia? Actually, we met um, earlier when um, it was OER. I think it was OER 2017 in Bristol, um, and you had a satellite oh, yes. then too. So oh, yes. um, we converged at the lab first at that point, and then we yes. So it's interesting event. because it was OER that uh, brought us together in the first place. That's exactly right. So anyway, I guess that we can move now and talk a little bit about how we came up with the, the idea of uh, looking at care and the notion of care in openness and education. We had many a conversation after um, OER 2019, and unfortunately, the three of us weren't able to attend, but we watched closely um, from afar, and we were deeply inspired by the conversations and the presentations and the generosity that unfolded there. And of course, we have huge uh, shoes to fill in terms of Laura and Catherine's wonderful um, concept for 2019. The thing that we noticed was a strong um, sort of spirit that emerged uh, from last year's conference was the idea of hope. And um, for us, as we put our heads together, we really wanted to think about how we could follow up 
in response to that emergence of a distinct kind of hope for open education. Um, and there were many angles we took at first when we were thinking about what this theme would be. But finally, there was a sort of ding, 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 when we felt that um, we found the concept that we really wanted to bring to the foreground in shaping a conversation around what open education could be. And that concept, of course, was the idea of care. So, um, you know, we knew that there might be sort of um, a little bit of acclimation to the notion of care as a significant aspect of what we might talk about this year. Um, but we loved it from the beginning, first and foremost, because it, it harnessed this idea of social justice that was at the center of all the conversations that were um, unfolding last year. So um, in terms of the issues we hope to cover this year, we really do want to address um, questions of privilege, questions of equity, um, the problem of precarity um, and power relations um, and public interest. Those things we want to grapple with, open up, really think about um, powerfully uh, together this year. But we also understand that there are limits or constraints when thinking about the idea of care and proceeding in an open education environment. So um, we know that the term first and foremost um, registers an idea of nurturing, um, compassion, and um, you know now more than ever, uh, we're very proud of the selection of this theme um, for obvious reasons. Uh, when we first chose this, um, we had a very specific sense of what we could do with this theme. But in, in this moment, it must take center stage, the idea of care. Um, so we hope to dig deeper and lend this term a kind of rigor. Um, and we hope that in the age of the pandemic and in the age of data surveillance and surveillance capitalism, um, and the, the age of risk on the open web um, that we might be able to map out together as a community, um, you know, some aspects of care practices and the critical components of care practices. So um, that's what we have in mind. I don't know if Jonathan and Daniel want to add to that. Yes, I mean, just to say also that uh, the keynote speakers that we have invited will be looking at this intersection between care and education and openness uh, from different perspectives, uh, but all of them have been somehow um, um, covering this topic. So we have Janet and Joe who will be talking about uh, OER openness and, and care uh, within uh, academic publishing. So academic publishing as a form of uh, care. Um, and also Janica, who is a colleague, who is part of our Center for Post-Digital Cultures, uh, that they have been working around the pirate care, for example, in the past. Um, the colleagues from Themos 98 will be looking at pedagogies of care and, and care in connection with uh, activism as well. So uh, outside the formal boundaries of uh, education as well. Uh, and then we have Saba, who has been doing really interesting work around surveillance. Um, and surveillance is something that we knew that we wanted to cover um, through different activities during the conference. This really reminds me of, of when I was a child with two, two older brothers who um, I always had to put my hand up to, to be able to get a moment to, to speak. Um, two, two big think, brothers. Um, <laughs> Two older brothers. Um, so yes, Mir, Mir and Daniel, uh, I see as family, uh, I think, in that light. I think one of the things that for us, I think, was was really important is really, and, and it took some time, I think, for us to wrangle, um, was given the, the breadth of backgrounds and spaces that we sort of came from, uh, of really how could we both bring that thematically together, but also, I guess, in terms of the construct and some of the things that, as Daniel mentioned, um, that we do both inside the Disruptive Media Learning Lab and within within our um, um, sister um, 
Research Centre for Post-Digital Cultures is really consider process. And I think one of the things that really stood out for us, and I'm going back through some of our uh, many pages of notes uh, when we were trying to plan this through, was I think that that there was this uh, quote from uh, Zemos in, in terms of that they seek to develop a, a mediation process, which is about activating relationships between a range of kind of participants, whether they're activists, artists, academics, foundations, and public institutions. And I think for us, that really resonated and gave us uh, a way of seeing who we would like to be involved, how do we go about con conceiving all of this. And and we're hoping and we're, we're super hopeful and, and grateful to the team at Alt with their amazing sort of expertise to bring that not only to life now within an online environment, but also the support they've given us through some of the, 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 the pre-satellite events. Um, so perhaps we, we, we might jump uh, both into um, why we ended up with uh, a, a quasi uh, Campbell's soup tin as, a, as our symbol uh, for OER 20. Mia, do you want to start off maybe? Sure. Um, so one of the best things about being an OER chair is that you have these wonderful conversations that punctuate the months that pass. Um, and I remember a great conversation that we had with Brian Mathers um, included. And of course, what he does is, is listen and, and synthesize the ideas that uh, a group might be throwing around and then make those ideas come to life in a visualization or an illustration that um, speaks to the complexity of the things you're grappling with. And he did precisely that when he came up with this icon for the conference. So of course it's a soup can. And we were discussing the idea that care often comes um, at us as a sort of soft term. We associate it with things that give us a cozy feeling like a hot, warm um, bowl of soup that's given to you when you're sick as a child. Um, and so we want to have that be one form of association with the theme of the, uh, of the conference, of course. But then when um, Brian was sort of playing with that image and used the soup can as um, a, a reference point for that part of the conversation, he, uh, we knew right away when we saw that soup can that it also harness the kind of underlying tensions that we see when we choose the theme of care for the conference. Um, and what I mean by that is if soup is nourishing and it fortifies our body and soul, it also has been mass produced. It's been commodified. It has been distributed on a large scale. And so, of course, we can see similar tensions between that idea and the concerns we have around open education at this moment in time. You know, so uh, I think many people associate the soup can with um, Andy Warhol's iconic image of um, a multiplicity of soup cans um, side by side. Um, and I think that we were excited that the image um, had that uh, complexity to it in the sense that um, it, it alluded to both soup itself and what soup represents for all of us, perhaps, but then also this question of the scale up of consumer culture. Um, and so we were very thrilled when we saw that one. And we also thought it was a little, um, you know, uh, kitschy and catchy. So, uh, <laughs> another funny coincidence is that there was supposed to be a big exhibition of Andy Warhol at Tate Modern in London happening right now. So we were also hoping that we could go there all together, uh, which is not happening now. But uh, anyway, it was a happy coincidence. Yeah, and I, and I think one of the things that we're we're keen to encourage if people, I think a few people um, uh, have had chance to look at this. Martin shared the the link to the image uh, again, playing on that the visual aesthetics of repetition of remix, which all feel uh in synergy with uh, i guess open education more, more broadly um it'd be great to have a look at and see some of those perhaps on uh brian's sort of virtual uh kind of a quilt uh so yeah ho hopefully looking forward to people having some fun um with that shall i click on that? i'm conscious slightly of time everybody um but so daniel if i may maybe say something to begin with here and then uh you can jump in um sure. 
I, I think one of the things that we're really conscious of with with this sense of um, privilege that w we have by working within the institutions is um, that we get that opportunity to either host events or go to a range of events. And we, we were keen and, and really conscious, I guess, when we were originally planning uh, the conference for, um, to be in London, that that might not be possible for everybody. So trying to create a number of ways for people to engage and, and really build upon that, um, that, that the amazing stuff that um, already happens around OER and, uh, and ALT, we, we um, offered to host uh, the Wikimedia in Education kind of summit. And here are just a few slides. And again, you can find out a little bit more. Uh, it was a really sort of a inspiring day where we had a range of different people coming into this sort of context. Um, Alison Littlejohn kind of sort of gave a, a, a keynote to, to the opening of the event. You can look on, follow the hashtag to see a few more slides. But these are just uh, a couple of, of sample because one of the things that we'd been hoping to do with, with Brian was really put together this 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 visual sort of a smorgasbord of ways or, and different ways of, of thinking about um, the the range of events we were planning on doing a few more bits and pieces but this a couple of these really sort of um, I think stood out for us that was it was quite entertaining is what happens if we were putting a Wikimedia in residence within the the chief exec of an institution what might change in that sort of space um, I, I think was one of the things that arose through the, the conversation. And very much this this idea that I guess the although the there are powers and roles and relationships at play within the institution, that I think equally we need to feel that we have that space to be both beholden to what we're trying to do, but also perhaps to take more of an activist approach so that we stop doing these things on the cusp, on the verges. Um, or, of our activity and we find ways and creative ways to sort of build that into our everyday practice. I don't know if Daniel wanted to mention a couple of other things or? Well I just saw that Lorna Campbell uh, just joined uh, and she was also a keynote on the day um, so if you visit the link that um, Martin just shared uh, you will be able to watch uh, the two keynotes and also you will be able to see their all the illustrations created by Brian on that day, which provide a very good summary of the, the main highlights um, of the day. Um, we still have more documentation to add, so keep an eye on that. Um, and that's also something that we are quite conscious. Uh, so as Jonathan said, uh, we have been trying to provide other opportunities, other entry points for people to, to be part of this. And, and we are generating a lot of documentation, which will be released obviously uh, and there are an open license um yes to say interesting because this was a uh, one of the satellite events uh, and it was uh, we were planning to run a number of satellite events uh, so before oer yesterday we were supposed to host two events in the lab in coventry one was um um a kind of a workshop uh, uh with a reclaim hosting about the um, uh, going back to the basics of the web as a space for teaching and learning. And then the other one was um, a seminar run by Anne-Marie Scott and other colleagues trying to reimagine education and higher education as a public good in the age of uh, surveillance. Um, so we, I'm sure we will find in the future opportunities to, to do that. Um, I know that there is already an online version of the seminar uh, which will be happening uh, soon. So now that take us to the directory that many of you probably have already participated uh, in. Um, so I don't know if you want to say something, Mia or Jonathan, uh, before we start talking about this. I'll just say briefly that, um, you know, one of the things that's a challenge in this context of an online um, conferencing is is how uh, to make sure that the connections that we make take um, front and center. Um, you know, we dip in and out of sessions as we can, and that's absolutely the way it will go and should go. But um, one of the things we really agonized over when we knew we were moving into an online context was how to try to put some 
magic into the the experience of connecting with people you haven't met yet or that you're just getting to know better etc and so one aspect of our efforts in in designing around that concern um, is this social bingo spot, which is a way to get to know people um, just in the sense that you're sort of uh, chatting with someone um, and meeting them in the, in the hallway, etc. cetera. Um, we're trying to um, you know, have places where people can discover each other. Um, and so the spot sort of does a little of that work for us. So um, I, I just... Maybe, mm -hmm. Go ahead. I was thinking that probably we should explain a spot because even though many people might be familiar, but probably the majority won't be familiar with a spot. And a spot is um is a kind of a funny acronym because there is not one single definition, there is not one single way of spelling out the acronym. And that's something that um, uh, Anna Levine and um, I think Brian Lamp uh, came up uh, with the acronym in the first place, and then. Alan has been uh, the father of uh, Anna Brofes plots, which uh, one one of the possible uh, uh, ways of spelling it out is uh, the simplest uh, possible learning um, tool, uh, learning open tool. So this is basically a customized WordPress, which enables anyone to easily contribute uh, without having to create an account uh, or anything. So just by going there, uh, you might be able to contribute. Um, and that's what we wanted. We wanted to have really low entry barriers. There is just a password to prevent the spam, but anyone who has registered um, to the conference uh, should be able to contribute. Um, and we just wanted to share some questions for uh, people to get to know each other. And now that uh, many of you have already contributed, we wanted to suggest uh, some little activity. So let me move to the next slide, which, I mean, uh, you already know how to contribute. In case not, you just have to go to the website, click on the tab share, and then you have to use the access code, uh, take care. Now, what we wanted to do is to ask you to go there and click on random person and keep clicking until you find someone you haven't met before. Uh, and then what we would like you to do is to read the bio uh, and the answers to the interview that we proposed and then select a quote or some comment or something that this person said that you found particularly interesting. And then go to Twitter if you're on Twitter um, and yes, uh, mention this, uh, include the, hash, the handle of this person, the Twitter handle, uh, if they are on Twitter, and then use the two hashtags to share these uh, kind of insights. And if you're not on Twitter, you're going to still participate because you can just use the, the spot itself and leave a comment, which will be moderated, but uh, we will make sure that they are published uh, very swiftly. And Daria, thanks so much. I'm just looking in the chat, um, just seeing that it means weave and connect in Polish. That's that's amazing. Oh, wow. I'm gonna take that take that one away. So thank you. Yes, it's perfect. And thanks, Gabby, for sharing the post uh, to uh, Alan's uh, website blog where he explains the origins. Indeed, and 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 hopefully this chopping and changing between the three of us is is, is not too too um, uh, discombobulating for if, <laughs> in case that's a word I'm not sure, but um, yeah, no, I, I think if we just take a few minutes for people to have a bit of a play um, uh, in the, the the social bingo space, um, it, Daniel and um, me were kindly prompting and reminding me, so I, I was up super early this morning just to try and finish mine off. So. Um, yeah, no, I think it's great. And I can't believe we've already got, I think it's 116 in there now. Thanks for sharing that one, uh, Francis. Not everything that counts can be counted. Not everything that we can count it counts from real time edgy.
There's some real gold in those entries that, you know, grabbing a quote and then foregrounding it maybe on Twitter and, and sharing it out so it draws attention to someone new. Um, <clears throat> it's wonderful. Yeah. I think I've just got up Joe Wilson's uh, from Glasgow, uh, whose vibe and meme is whenever an educator posts open resources on the web, an angel gets their wins. Open Scotland <laughs> is doing its thing. It's fantastic. Excellent. Yeah. So, hey, look, I think thanks for everybody for indulging us a little bit there. Hopefully you can uh, continue to sort of um, play around. It, it was our way of trying to think of how do we bring some some sense of participation uh, within our uh, our opening slot. So yeah, if I continue through, I think we've got a few more a few more points. Um, so uh, Martin, are we able to get this this video to play perhaps? I'm afraid not, but we'll... Ah, okay. But can we share uh, uh, the link for people to sort of um, maybe in their own time play along to? Apologies, I should have checked. Uh, I, I think one of the, when we were thinking about some of those um, those questions and what, we're, what we were looking forward to, uh, I think we were reflecting a little bit back on Laura and Catherine's sort of final summing summing up post from OER uh, 19. And um, one of the things that uh, I think late last night um, uh, for me and, uh, or late last night for Daniel and I, and uh, I think lunchtime for, for me, we, we came across the, the, the Tags Explorer dance, um, which, yeah, for us just sort of seemed to sum up that idea of both what I think has, existed within the OER community for quite a while. Uh, the sense of playful humor, the ability, the reach to um, really draw together kind of a, a wide range of, of people. So um, yeah, this, this simply uh, shows uh, much to our amusement. Um, yeah, the, the, the Tags Explorer dancing away merrily uh, from OER 19. So for those of you who are, might not be familiar with Tags Explorer, which was designed, of course, by our own Martin Hoxie, it's a visualization of the network in action, and it's dynamic, and you can see every node of participation. And um, Wendy Talio from um, Australia sort of remixed uh, some of the video movement of the network from OER 2019, and then layered over it some music, and it's really fun. And we wanted to um, highlight in this moment in our in our um, uh, comments this morning uh, what we're looking forward to, and um, I think that that sense of a network coming together and dynamism and sharing, etc., was something we wanted to capture. So you guys can check out the little video. Um, and I guess at this stage, the three of us will just share a few of the highlights that we're looking forward to within the conference. So I'll. Um, take that up first. I am very much looking forward to speaking with Sava Sahili Singh um, later uh, in my morning time and your afternoon time in the UK. Um, uh, Sava's work, uh, as Daniel mentioned earlier, uh, captures the concern we have over surveillance capitalism at this moment. Um, but it, at its heart, it's really opening the, up the question of care. And why am I so excited about speaking with her? Well, for the obvious reasons of her artistry and her work and thinking about that, but also because my graduate students and I are, are speaking of these, and Alan Levine, who co-teaches uh, this networked course with me. Um, the two of us have been working on this question of um, surveillance capitalism with our students and watching Saba's films as well. She has a series of short films. So this will be a, a culmination of some of the kinds of conversations I've been having with my students as well. Um, so I'm super looking forward to that. Um, I also want to um, make mention of a very special element of this OER 20 conference, which is the Fem Ed Tech quilt that originally was going to be displayed in all of its beautiful collaborative glory in the gallery in London of our conference space. So um, 
I want to just mention uh, that Francis Bell at the helm of this project um, has been an inspiration to all of us. And she's also had quite a bit of um, help from Suzanne Hardy. Um, we will be hearing about the quilt and seeing the quilt in the session workshop um, today. And that quilt, which is called the quilt of care and, and justice in open education, that quilt uh, has a life well beyond OER 20. Um, so I'm just thrilled that we'll get a glimpse of it and that it will travel and have a life of its own um, beyond the conference, but is in some way launched within our conversation about care uh, in the next two days. And then finally, I just want to mention that I'm really interested in this karaoke session later on. Um, I've heard plenty of stories about Jim Groom's talents, and <laughs> I know that there's a lot of others who, who regularly play along. I think Martin Weller is in that clan. Um, I think Laura Ritchie, Brian Lamb, I could go on and on, but I just can't wait for this karaoke. I don't know if I'm going to have the courage to join in and sing, but I'm definitely going to be checking it out. Daniel, do you want to? Yeah, say yeah. A bit? happy to go now. Um, so I'm looking forward to finding uh, ways and learning about uh, ways of taking care and caring pedagogies to the core of uh, not just open education, but education at large. Um, so this is one of the kind of uh, things that I was hoping to achieve through the conference before we came up with uh, this uh, new format. So now that is an online uh, version of the conference, I'm, I think that these uh, tax explorers, explorer relationships are even more important because the conference itself will be happening, distributed in, in this network of people. Um, so I think that it will be adding up a, an important layer of complexity and hopefully new uh, connections will emerge more than ever before. Um, so this is kind of the, 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 the main highlights. Uh, I'm also looking forward to, of course, uh, chairing and introducing the um, uh, keynote by uh, Themos98, which will be happening on Twitter. And also because of our personal connection. And, and so I was part of uh, the group uh, for a while. Um, we all met together when we were um, actually studying under undergraduate studies. So it's bringing me a lot of uh, nice memories. And it's all, always very good to have an opportunity to, to work with them again. If I maybe just close on from this one. Um, uh, I think on the one hand, one of, one of the things I'm looking forward to is, uh, I guess, at some point, some sleep. Uh, it, it's been a, a crazy few weeks, I think, for, for everybody. Um, but yes, and I think that, that ability, I think, as Daniel's just sort of mentioned, about how the things that we can discover and we can find over the next two days can really sort of, I guess, find their way into um our everyday practices and, and and really that's that's the bit that for me is the the constant challenge and the space that i enjoy sort of occupying I, I think by being able to work within um higher education um and i'm absolutely delighted to be co-chairing the session with uh Janneke and uh, and joe um i've had the pleasure of collaborating a, a, on a few occasions with with Janneke and um, yeah, their, their session tomorrow, we're gonna very much build on that, that sense of how we can converse and work collectively, but also share perhaps different ways of understanding those same challenges. So rather than saying that we all need to have the same voice, that ability that we can do these things, we can work together as they're doing around the, the community-led open publication infrastructures uh, for monographs, which is a, a title and a project um, that, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward that we can share with everybody uh, in, in tomorrow morning's session. Um, well, you probably cannot read the, many of the words uh, from this uh, visualization, but this is basically um, a cloud with uh, some of the most frequent uh, words from the abstracts uh, accepted to the conference. Um, it's just to give you to give you an overview of the of the kind of flavor of the of the conference itself, because even though it's called the OER conference, it's not just about open educational resources, it's, it's about much more. And if you look at the most frequent uh, words, 
you will see that this uh, that definitely people community participation learning is much more important than technology itself even though technology is uh, enabling us and even more in these uh, circumstances to make it happen but the focus is on what actually people do with technology and and with uh, the resources that we have available and um, we will be sharing this on a blog post uh, later on so you will be able to explore them in more detail so uh we wouldn't we would be remiss if we didn't mention the idea of care and then not talk about the urgency and importance of taking care of yourself at this time we all know um, that this is not an easy moment in our shared history there's a lot of things that we're stressed about and we want to emphasize in this opening that you guys need to pace yourselves take what you want from the conference and take care of yourself. So, I mean, a lot of the material within the conference will also be available in archive. Um, and we just want to make sure that everyone remembers that we remember that everybody needs to take care of themselves. And we uh, want, we just want to emphasize that. You guys want to throw anything else in? Go on, Daniel. You, you've got the, the, the star picture there, I think. <laughs> <laughs> that was taken uh, last week uh, while I was joining, I think, a team meeting. Uh, yes, you can see my daughter who was uh, peacefully sleeping, uh, having a nap there. So it's, it's, I guess it's a, it's a testament of uh, how we have to combine many different responsibilities these days. Um, I think mostly it's working, at least for me. <laughs> I hope for everyone uh, else as well. So yes, it, it's been an adventurous kind of year. We, uh, as a family, had two new kittens, one of which who uh, who um, kindly en enjoys hiding in a box. Uh, so Raya, the uh, brother to, to Harla, um, <laughs> has decided to self-isolate in our kitchen inside a, a cardboard box. Um, I think this, this care, I think, um, also goes out, I think, to everybody who is both online now. I think we've got 125 people with us, but in particular, I think, as Marin said, everybody is is really sort of making this feel truly special. Um, but please don't feel obligated. The sessions are recorded. Please dip in and out as you see fit. Um, I know I've said immediately to my team, my, my life seems to be spent against the screen. So part of, um, I think in our last catch up with Marin and Martin, I, I was just mentioning that we need to just make sure that people have that time and space to feel that they can leave the screen and not feel uh, sort of any, any sense of guilty or, or pressure. But yeah, a, a huge big thank you to everybody. So, um, you know, our final comments are um, sort of offering up a reflective series of questions. And um, in Dan so Daniel inaugurated our social bingo squad. Um, and in his own um, quotes, he shared uh, something that the French philosopher Bruno Latour recently um, prompted the world with in terms of questions. Um, and we thought those questions are so pertinent to the work we hope to do with all of you over the course of the next two days. So, uh, Daniel, you want to sort of read out these questions and frame them a bit? Yes, sure. So, also, I want to say that this is part of a wider, a larger uh, set of questions that you can um, you can hopefully uh, visit. But these are the first question and the, f and, and the fourth question. The first one is about the uh, activities that now are suspended. Uh, that we wouldn't like to be resumed um, so things that we are now uh, not doing uh, perhaps when we go back to normality if we can ever do that anyway we uh, wouldn't like to see them and the second the, the second uh, i guess the other side of the coin is a uh, which of the now suspended activities would you like to develop resume or even create from scratch um, these are two questions that we would like to launch to the community and, and apply them to our uh, daily realities. Uh, and specifically, I think that we could come up with very interesting questions if we think about uh, education and, and learning uh, in these particular times. I just 
uh, wanted to add that this is such a moment of crisis and, and um, in our welcome note, we mentioned that we think crisis is also like this kind of um, tipping point in which things can get worse or can get better. And so um, hopefully in our gathering together in these uh, next two days, we'll be thinking about um, the role that open education will play in taking the world forward differently um, than we left it behind after all i don't know if this is ever going to end really i'm talking about the pandemic right now but um, hopefully it will resolve itself eventually and in the midst of all of that there'll be a lot of shift change etc so we hope that you'll think of these questions and and um you know they'll inspire you to think about the context of your own work as as we all move forward and it's interesting to see that many people in the chat are uh, thinking about assessment uh, as something that we could probably rethink uh, in this uh, situation. Yeah, so really, uh, I guess there there are the things that we'll be, uh, I think, trying to mull over as, as we get chance to either chair or dip in and out of the, the various sessions over the next kind of two days. Um, I think one of the the things that would be entirely remiss is, is really not to uh, formally thank um, Marin and Martin both for their guidance and the, the the wider alt team. And as Marin said, I think at the beginning, the trustees for sort of still seeing value in convening um, the conference um, and th that unbelievable confidence and reassurance that Marin and Martin have given the three of us has been uh, phenomenal. So yeah, um, a big, big thank you to them uh, as this has not been any small task uh, to put together in, in such, a, such a short period of time. And an especially huge thank you, I, th I think, to um, the unbelievable positivity from our immediate sort of our conference committee that we were working with on how quickly they were turning around all of the the reviews of papers, submissions, um, and again, I think the, the last call that um, Daniel and me were able to take with them, I, I think really showed that that sense of uh, togetherness. But yeah, so a, a huge thank you to them and the program, wow, what an incredibly full program. So yeah, um, the next few days, uh, a couple of days are gonna be fantastic. A big, big thank you. And a thank you to Daniel and Mia for making this feel super special from, from me too. Thank you to everyone. Lots of love, yes. <laughs> thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, Mia. I'm so thrilled to have you and have a wonderful welcome. Before we go and start today's program, there's three important things that we still want to share with everyone here. Um, if the conversations that you're having at OER20 want to go on beyond the session or you're looking for a cafe to meet up with someone else, we've set up a social space that is open all hours, open to everyone, and you will hopefully always find a warm welcome. I know you will find the warmest welcome in five minutes because our very own Debbie Baff is going to be there offering hugs and welcome to you all. So please, if you want to meet someone or you are feeling like a bit of social interaction, head there. And I also wanted to point out that throughout the program, we have created hashtags. You're all getting the hang of them already. Social hashtags and brown bag lunch hashtags. So throughout the day, follow the hashtags. But I'm going to ask my colleague Martin to introduce the last feature that we want to highlight today, because I know it's close to his heart in particular. So, Martin, do you want to tell us all what's coming up this evening? Because we there ain't no party like a car OER party. Um, so, <laughs> in the absence of a social program, where. Um, uh, for those who were going to attend in London, we were going to um, visit a, a, a former sex shop, um, which has been turned into a nice cafe and bar. We're having to find um, alternative um, entertainment for you all. And I have to say, um, this has been made possible by uh, Jim Groom and Tim Owens at Reclaim Hosting. Uh, they're kindly hosting um, the inaugural OER20 carry OER Oki night, which and there's a strong tradition within the open education community to uh, uh, 
um, expressing ourselves through through song. So um, you can watch. Um, uh, all attendees are uh, invited to uh, take out the microphone if they want, um, and you'll find in your um, email this morning from us for the day one activities, you'll find a link or how you can join into the session. But if you just want to um, have a, a, a watch from the sidelines, if you tune in to ds106.tv at 8 p.m. BST this evening, um, you'll, you'll uh, some here some of the, the the greatest hits being um i'm not going to say murdered but um uh, being, being shared so but i have to say um uh, when we tested this with um jim and tim on friday i hadn't laughed so much in a number of weeks so i think it's uh hopefully going to be a nice light relief and uh probably end of the day Thanks, Martin. Um, seagulls in the background have played us nicely onto the last part of the morning welcome, which is that we're now getting underway with the program um, for the rest of this conference day, so to speak, or it might be your conference night or afternoon or midday. There'll be two live sessions in our two webinar rooms. We hope that um, you've been able to navigate the program the order of the program is the order in which things will happen. And there's also much asynchronous content that is coming your way. Now, we finished dead on time, two minutes to spare. So I'm going to say thank you for joining us. And I hope you enjoy the next two days and leave final words and waves goodbye to Daniel, Mia and Jonathan. Mia, go, go for it. So I just want to say, um, go for it, guys. Enjoy this. Um, and I'm really looking forward to connecting with as many of you as I can. Um, and I know there'll be all kinds of wonderful things that emerge from this convergence that we're, we're having together. So thank you. And really looking forward to everything. <laughs> thank you, um, yeah, just to say that the just a reflection about the the situation and the fact that even though we are in very different locations, we are probably going through very similar um, a very similar process. We are or most of us are probably at our homes, and we will be connecting from our own domestic spaces, and that's uh, something that brings us more togetherness, I guess. Uh, so even though if we are far apart, we will be. Uh, sharing something very special, which hopefully won't be repeated <laughs> in next iterations of the conference. Uh, but that's something that we can make the most of uh, in this occasion. And on the basis that I, I seem to spend my life running from pillar to post and always running late, um, I'll be very brief. Uh, a huge big thank you again. And yeah, um, enjoy the next two days and looking forward to connecting with people uh, online. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye. Bye, everyone. See you at the program. Have a wonderful time with us here at OER20. So going to the social space now. See you there. Bye, Daniel. See you there. <laughs>